Hi guys, welcome to The Game Plan. I'm Lindsay. I'm Rico. And this is a continuation in our movie series. series. Movies that yeah. we like series. Yeah. Um, it's just specific categories of movies, specific categories and then movies that we think best exemplify. That's the perfect that category. Word. Yeah, that's okay. exactly it. Okay. Very, very specific categories. We yeah. tried to not make this general. Like it's not just best comedy, best action movie. No, yeah. it's very specific. Very specific. So. Okay. And another rule is, and throughout this entire series, and you, you know, you can see the playlist of these. Um, no one movie is allowed to be in any two categories. Right. So it could be a based on true story and animal movie, but you got to pick one or the other. Yeah. You can't. Which one does it more capture and try and go with that? Yeah. That way, you, we could get a bigger spread of movies to talk about rather than just, just always saying, talking about the dolphin tale yeah every movie is the godfather yeah, yeah. that's how it would be okay so all right do you want me to start yes all right we're gonna do sci-fi horror so this this one is um i would say of all of them this is the darkest category on my on my end as, as far as like the the movies we're going to talk about in this video for me are the darkest of any other set of movies and all the other yeah, this, videos. Yeah, there's a lot of horror and suspense stuff yeah. in this one. Um, all right, so sci-fi horror. This one was really hard, and I, I actually immediately went with one. Mm -hmm. And then as I was doing research for another possible topic, I decided this they had to share it. Okay. They had to share it. Are we it. doing two again? <laughs> <laughs> I was not told that we could do two, but apparently we can't. It's our it. video. We're going to do whatever we want. Okay. Um... So both, the reason I chose both of these is because they were introduced to me basically at the same time, like my sophomore, junior year in college. Okay. Um, and they both struck a, I'd never seen anything like this before, didn't realize we could go into this realm type of thing. Okay. Event Horizon. Good one. Uh, the, 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 the concept of the physics introducing hell like that, like... I, again, love physics, yeah. and and when there's that just enough physics to hook me, and then it, you know, space in and of itself is terrifying. terrifying. Yeah. And so you do that now on a ship that is literally the the per, the the the, the concrete concretization, the manifestation yeah, of the hell. Manifestation, I think, is better. The like it's it's like this manifestation it's, of it's hell. Hell in space. Was so, like, oh, like. Yeah. I don't get scared. I'm not a person who gets scared, but this was so adrenaline inducing. I don't know how yeah, to describe it. It's eerie. Like, yeah, it's so yeah. discomforting yeah. and, and oh, I don't like it, but it was amazing. I, and I really like, and so this was the one that just immediately popped in sci-fi horror. Oh yeah. But then again, as I was looking, this other one came in that I feel like deserves this spot as well. Okay. They share and that's pitch black. Pitch black is mine as well. Oh, is that yours? Yeah. Okay. And I'm glad. So <laughs> yours is pitch black. Yeah. We can talk about hers now. Um, yeah. It, Dude, this movie blew my mind. It was just like nothing. I'd ever seen I'd before. Ever seen before. Yeah. And I struggle with this one. Like, is this a creature feature? Is this a, like, what is this? Yeah. And it's kind of, it's like, it really could have fit my number one spot in a lot of categories because yeah, it was so original. And Vin Diesel killed it. Like, you yeah. just. He was a good actor, it turns out. I yeah. Mean, and I, I don't usually... So I, I always think of Jan, Daniel Tosh's description of Vin Diesel when he's talking about... Um, he, he, he segues from basically how, how people who with disabilities are, are 10 times as strong yeah. as people. Like monkeys are 10 times as strong as a person and a person with a disability is 10 times as strong. What happens if you had a disabled gorilla? Yeah. Well, that's Vin, Vin Diesel. Yeah. Um, and I kind of get that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's not really. But the thing is, I think the dude in general has done a, a good job with what he's trying to do. Right. In this role. It was I, perfect for him. He, it, it was. I feel like it was, was almost very, written for him. Yeah, it was very stoic. He, it was very, like, powerful. And, yeah. But smart. Cause smart, athletic, and, and spot, clever. And, he, and You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And. And his eyes. Yeah. the the, the they, they put the they, lacing on his eyes yeah. so they can see in the dark and. Yeah, I mean, it was just like so many things that you just, it was, okay, calm down. There were so many things that I didn't expect, because I don't remember, I don't think I knew what this movie was when I went in. I didn't it. know anything about it. And then it was in space, so that's scary. And, and that's another was, thing, I, I was introduced to Event Horizon the same way. Yeah. Like, in college, you'll, you'll probably hear that there's probably a, a 
in college, I didn't know anything about what I was yeah. like. These were the things like I just happened to have a few hours mm -hmm. on a Saturday afternoon, and some friends said, "Hey, you want to watch a movie?" Yeah. And they put it in. Yeah. And that's what happened here too. It's like. I think <sighs> I think my sister Brina, like rented it or something. We watched it at home. But I'm scared of it. I was scared of everything. I'm still kind of scared of everything. I was scared of all these movies at the time. But she put this in, and it was it was enough of a horror to be suspenseful, but it wasn't the kind of horror that was going to keep me up at night because yeah. it's in outer space it's on a different planet um but this planet has 22 years of darkness and it has these bat-like carnivore animals that are the that, size of two times a man yeah. like they're huge bat-like things so they come out in the dark and these people crash land on this planet and it's a transport ship so these are just people yeah. and then it happens that they're transporting this um inmate as well and He's a survivor. Hilarity ensues. <laughs> so, certain types of hilarity. Yes, this may be so good. Yeah. So the, this is actually part of a, tr a trilogy. Yeah, but it was the first one. This The second one was... The Chronicles of Riddick? Yeah, Chronicles of Riddick. It was like, eh, I, I saw it once. I don't need to see it again. It was all right, whatever. Mm. It was, the problem was it was just nowhere near as good as the first one. And it one. was nowhere... And it wasn't anything like it. Yeah, it was totally different. Yeah. Um, oh, but the third one. But then, and I was going to say, but then there's Riddick, I which just is, remembered which is the was. third one in that trilogy, and that's kind of a re... Like, they, mm -hmm. they put him back into the same type of role that yeah. the original one was, and while it's not as good as the original, I think it is vastly better than the second one, and a very good watch in and yeah. of itself. So good. If you... Like, if you like that type of yeah. action, suspense, like bad assery, yeah, Riddick. I just remembered the good yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. So it's a trilogy, but really, it's just a duality. Yeah. The, well, and the storyline itself was not the same group. Like they, they, they wanted to mm -hmm. PG. So the first ones are the last ones are. They wanted to PG thirteen oh, it. They wanted to see if they could kick this character into a mainstream mm -hmm. and see if they could go, like. Uh, Mission Impossible style where they could just, just do a franchise yeah it. and it just didn't work out because the 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 character only works when he's that dark yeah. uh, but then Vin Diesel found Fast and the Furious and they just churn those out like yeah they do so good for him they have no problem just uh -uh. throwing those oh, put an orange in that yeah. one see what happens. <laughs> oh yeah okay now we have Fast and Furious it's we'll call it the Fast and Orangiest <laughs> so yeah okay all right cool all I'm right. glad we had a crossover yeah um, paranormal horror. Okay. So this is going to be horror that's based around the concept of demonic possession and ghosts and hauntings, yes. that kind of thing. Am I going first? You are. Okay. No, no, I'm going first. Okay. I go first, sorry. Um, so mine is The Exorcist. Classic. I kind of thought that would be. Tried and true. I, yeah. I love horror as a genre. Um, the Exorcist is one that introduced me to horror early. And again, I don't get afraid. Like... My introduction to horror was watching Aliens as like a six-year-old kid yeah. by myself. Um, How and did that happen? <laughs> I do remember having, it was startling. Um, it was quite alarming for me. And I do remember like when I'm go, trying to go to bed thinking like, what if these things are under my bed? I do remember thinking about that kind of stuff, but I never remember experiencing fear. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. And so um, The Exorcist was introduced to me. I was fairly young. I was probably early teens when I was introduced to The Exorcist, which is... One, a child being introduced to The Exorcist, but two, you know, th it was 20 years old by the time I saw right. it, right? So it's pretty rare to have someone young being introduced to that old of a movie anyway. Um, but I, I loved it. Even at that time, I latched onto this concept. Like, this is so enthralling of an idea of losing control of the reality around you in a way that is completely out of your hands. Yeah. And I just, like a freaking leech, latched onto that. And then that has driven a lot of my, I don't want to say biases, but my preferences in some of the movies that I pick is I love to see how people are, and again, because of Western storytelling, it's very much a, you've got a conflict and then you have the resolution. I always want to see what the writers do to have the characters resolve these insurmountable scenarios. Yeah, like how do you even start? Yeah, how, how would you go, your child is taken over by a being that you have no way of no controlling, way of control no interacting with, learning about. You don't, what are you going to do? Yeah, there's, you have no idea how to save your child. That would be terrifying. It's crazy. 
And then, yeah, and I think that movie introduced a lot of really good storytelling elements, introducing you to the... So this is something a lot of people, and I, and I, and I agree, is modern storytelling in movies has kind of dipped because they rely on the writing, cinematography, CGI to kind of make up for this, the character development and that kind of thing. I don't even think the writing. I think it's more the cinematography and the visuals. Yeah. The writing kind of dips as well. Yeah. They, they even try and redo The Exorcist, and it's a flop. Yeah. It's the, the way that the characters are introduced are done slowly and subtly throughout and so you 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 build a relationship with these characters that you don't even realize you're building until something impacts them in a way and you you immediately react to it because you're like oh that character and a lot of times it don't i just don't feel that way about characters these days they don't feel like i'm, I'm that attached to them because you're you get in and they just start like running people over in a car like yeah it's just so action driven and they don't ever commit like they do in this one like the main character Again, this is from the '70s, so yeah, if this you, is a spoiler, you sorry. Seen this by now. The main character ends up dying. Yeah. By and it's, it's very meaningful. It's a very much of a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, what, what do they call those? Um, the the when you when you die for someone else. Anyway. It well, but there's a name like a religious name for it because oh, okay. he's a he's a Catholic, he's Catholic um, priest. priest, and anyway, he he kills himself for this girl, and it's like. You found yourself so attached to them, even though, and he's kind of the star of the film, mm -hmm. even though he's not even introduced until like almost 45 minutes into the film. Um, and so like, how can they build a character that I care so much about when he's not even in the first third of the film or more? Um, it's so, they, I, all those things really yeah. made me realize how good they did. Yeah, it was just back when writing was the driving force. Yeah. And this kind of goes, it's a little off topic, but this kind of goes against your ideas that old movies are never going to be better than new movies. That's true. I, I am like very much biased is, against yeah. old films. And, and the reason I'm biased for them is because of cinematography, CGI, that's a no-brainer, right? Mm -hmm. The technology is going to make that better. But the craft, the human craft, has just, it's like anything, medicine. We're just getting better over time. Actors are getting better over time. The best actors from the 50s are basically like extras today. Yeah, it's I hate to say it, but they yeah. probably the extras today probably have more classical training than the biggest stars did back then. There just wasn't enough cultural impact. Like there weren't universities who were pumping out programs after program for this type of stuff. It just didn't exist, right? Yeah, and it was, it's it was, it's the same reason why the basketball players from the 30s are not going to be as good yeah. as the basketball players from today. They aren't trained as well. They don't have as much health knowledge about how to feed and train and but the Exorcist is kind of the. But the Exorcist kind, kind of, of goes against that. shows that it's it doesn't just take all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like if you do have a solid film that can sit behind practical effects, you can you can create something that is timeless. Yeah, yeah this it's is timeless. Yeah. This is one of those that kind of steps itself out of my typical. Yeah. What I call the bias of again, I'm not a fan of older films. Because back then it was just a bunch of white dudes that were moderately good looking yeah and, and now even, everybody's got to be like all built up and like ripped up and everything yeah it's kind of funny to think like what the the buff dudes from like you look at yeah. ben hur you know oh, he, no it was spartacus wasn't it spartacus and spartacus yeah and you're like did this has, have they ever done a squat like i'm not obviously not in oh, great shape so but i'm also yeah. not in front of millions of people trying right. to look sexy so <laughs> yowza okay okay so yes. yeah the exorcist Classic, classic film. And that's one of the ones... I, For a long time, I wouldn't watch demonic possession movies because it was so terrifying to me because it was just the unknown and all this stuff. But then, a few years ago, my cat died, and I just gobbled up horror movies like crazy. And so, and I, wa I actually watched this one before that. But now I'm just like, give me all the horror movies that you can. I'm like, can we watch a horror movie tonight? Yeah. It's so weird. It was like I had this really strong emotion and from Ava passing away that I needed this other strong emotion to like help me forget about that. Yeah. And so then I just gobbled up all these movies and The Exorcist is really good. So that's your gateway? Yeah, it was. The gate. The Exorcist was your gateway? Uh, Kind of, yeah. Wow. In, in movies that I enjoyed watching in that genre. Yeah. Yes. Wow. But my actual movie that I chose we watched a few years ago. I, I think I might know what it is. What do you think it is? The Oculus. No. Okay. Um, it's Paranormal Activity. 
Oh, I thought you didn't like this one. She used to not like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When he told me the plot of this movie, I lost my mind so much I didn't sleep. I wake, I stayed up all night long and played Bejeweled on my phone because I was terrified of this concept. And to me, that's a great horror movie. Yeah. But I didn't even watch it, and I was terrified. So it's it's kind of like a, it's a shot at home. It's not really found footage, is it? It. It is found footage. Is it? Yeah, I mean, at the end they say this was re recovered, or at the beginning it says this was recovered from okay. the, the the police files or whatever. But it, it's, yeah, it's done in a, a I guess it's a mockumentary yeah. style but it's, almost. It's cohesive and it's yeah, it's in a it's um, I don't know the word, um, but it's well done for what it is. Yes. And the concept is that a person can be haunted by a demon instead of like. The house. A place yeah. being haunted by a demon. I lost my fucking mind. I was so terrified that that was going to happen to me. This chick didn't handle it like she should have anyway, but it was that's the first time that that concept was really introduced to me because usually it's the place that's haunted, like a haunted house. This was a person was being followed by a demon, and it was terrifying. Yeah, I could see that being So I thought this was like perfect. Good job. That, yeah. yeah that. It's, and it's the boyfriend that caused the problems. If, if he wouldn't have interfered all the time, that thing wouldn't have... Right, but she could have told him taken to stop. steps yeah. to correct things. Sure. Yeah. She was the one that was being haunted. Yeah. Oh, my God, you guys. I actually really, really enjoy that film. The, yeah, that one is... I should watch it again because I didn't... That, when we watched it, it was before I really liked horror movies, so I should watch it again. But they've done so many of them since, it's kind of like... The original, I think, by far the best. Yeah. The, I've seen maybe all the rest of them, but I've, a lot of the rest of them, if not all. And the first one is hands, yeah. hands down the best. And this is probably my least favorite genre, is the found footage kind of thing. Because it's just never done in a way that you can see everything. It's just kind of annoying. Like, just let me see over there. They'll be like, what's that? And you can't see what they're looking at. It's annoying. So, but still, this movie to me is just paranormal. Awesome. Good, good call. I would say personified, but that's not the right word. Okay, so that was a long one. All right. Um, the next category <laughs> yeah. is suspense horror, okay, like specifically what? horror suspense. Because there's, um, we, we have, and the next category after that is suspense, general suspense, um, which is kind of, I found, a lo little loose. Similar, yeah. Um, but there are some really good suspense movies that aren't horror suspense, but this horror suspense movie needs to be talked about. To me, these were two categories that were very different, and I felt very different about the movie. I did, shows. too. Okay. I, I was able to easily categorize two movies that I felt stood alone in their yeah. respective category, even though they're technically... Both. One is a subset of the mm -hmm. other. Yeah. Um, horror suspense. Let me just double-check, because I, it's a yeah, no-brainer. Alien. Yeah. The original that's Alien. That's really good. The uh, original, yeah. This is another. It's a 70, you know, 78, I think is when it came Something out. Something like that, 78, 79. Um, is a timeless, practical effects, story driven, character driven, and they did suspense right. Mm -hmm. So let me elaborate. I mentioned that I had watched Aliens, the sequel to this, as a young boy. I think I was like six, seven years old. I, I watched that one before Alien. Okay. And this was like mid 80s. And I watched the sequel before the original. And, of course, you know, watched it. As a kid, you know, you, you have them on videotape. You watch them once a week, probably. Yeah, and you watch you movies really a like lot. It. I watched yeah. Aliens a lot. And then many years later, I was probably 12, 14, I watched Alien for the first time. Not, it's nowhere near as scary as Aliens. Aliens, there's hundreds there's so many aliens. of Aliens. An alien is just the one. I mean, sure, it's an alien, but it's just the one. Popped out of that guy. Yeah. But aliens, there's hundreds of aliens. Yeah. So I'm like, this is not, this is, it's, it's lame in comparison. It's not even a horror film. That's kind of what my 13-year-old head said. Or fast forward, I think maybe even 18, 19, you know. But just a few years later, I watched Alien again, and I was, and then I understood the suspense of it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. Because it's like, where is it? That's what they're doing. Yeah. This is not aliens. It's not meant to be aliens. This is alien. Yeah. This is one dude who will make you suffer and you are stuck with it. Yep. And I... And it's space again where it's terrifying anyway. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't get away. This could have easily been the sci-fi horror one. Yeah. Um, but I, I chose suspense because it stands out yeah, for that level of suspense. Like the entire movie, 
you realize you don't have enough fingernails on your body to get you yeah, through this. You're gonna need a manicure the next day. Um, I love that. And then ever since that moment when I had that realization, I have viewed horror and suspense differently. Different, yeah. Um, Aliens is now no longer even, I, it's more of an action film to me than a horror mm -hmm. film. I mean, it's obviously horror, but it's nothing, nothing. Alien, oh, so, so suspenseful. Good. Yeah. The only thing in that movie that I hate is Sigourney Weaver's underwear. Come on. <laughs> Because it doesn't look comfortable? It covered half her butt. Yeah, that's not very comfortable. Go up or down. Like, just don't wear underwear or wear underwear. <laughs> that's just the part of the movie where I'm just like, come on. Okay. The very end? Yeah. Is that, yeah. I think they just wanted to show Sigourney Weaver's butt because she was hot, but yeah. that's annoying. Okay. I never, I've never, i never seen underwear like that. No, that, do, that type of underwear does not exist that I've... Maybe it did in the 70s. I guess maybe it did. Let me know. Okay. Somebody's upset about that. It's just, it's a trigger issue. That's weird. Okay. Didn't think much of it, but <laughs> yeah. So, Alien. Suspenseful. It's good. Okay. So, my yes. suspense horror yeah. is a movie that we watched not too long ago. A couple months, maybe. It's The Descent. That's a good one. Because. That one's quite suspenseful. On two levels. Stuck in the dark. Two levels. Okay. This is suspenseful. Okay. These ladies are going for a exploration of caves they're spelunking yes they're kind of like adrenaline junkies and they go into this cave thinking it was this one cave on a map which turns out it wasn't it was an unexplored cave um they get in they have to go through a little hole about this big they all get in and then it collapses behind them suspenseful because you're stuck in a cave that you don't know if it has an end or not terrifying it's kind of like being in space like yeah. you just don't know anything you're stuck and then it turns out that there's this um, kind of human type thing Humanoid. that evolved in this cave that is... Um, carnivore. It's a carnivore. It's blind, but it can hear and smell very well. It's this... And it can move very quickly. Creepy, like, really white, kind of translucent thing that just gobbles up meat. And so you're stuck in a cave... But you derive just how powerful he is as the movie unfolds. And it's kind of mind control kind of stuff too, because once he goes into that mode, he can't stop. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like they. It's it's not his fault, right? Yeah. yeah he's, he goes he's, into kind of like a defense mode, and then he's engineered to behave yeah, a certain way, and nobody's he, safe. Yeah, and he promises to the boy or to the other his friend that he will look after his family and he is has escaped that that military facility by faking his death and is in the process of kind of relocating getting a new identity and he's just needs a buffer zone for a few weeks until he can kind of outline everything and get everything taken care of and it's this time that you're you're following him and and his interaction with that family trying to help them the best way that he knows yeah. how and he helps them a lot he does and he 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 like the boy he instills confidence in the boy and like there there really are a lot of things that he did as positives for the family but at the same time he's kind of a psychopath kind of yeah and it's not his fault but it's, he is there's some great like if you are a fan of anti-bully campaigns this has a great scene in it it is fun as and hell to watch. actually a few scenes but yeah. this one particular is so, so fun awesome. to watch yeah. um Super badass movie. Just one of those, like, under the radar. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd never heard of it. Super good. And it's, um, Dan Stevens is the main actor, and he, people will know him from, um, Beauty and the Beast. He was the Beast. This is so different. Like, this dude is such a good actor. Yeah. That movie was fantastic. He is a badass. And, he like, is. when I see him in other films, he seems kind of like a, a pretty boy, mm -hmm. just like, he hey, in, Buffy. He was in Downton Abbey. That like, type, yeah. Yeah. And, and he is the Terminator. Yeah. Like, dude is badass. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, that, he put, this movie put him on the map for me. And he, yeah, me too. He can kind of switch. I mean, even his facial expressions are, oh, this, yeah. you guys watch He did a good movie. job. Yeah, yeah. The guest. All right, so, but the, the one that I think is the de facto suspense movie of all time is The Game. 
so good. The game, uh, and I watched it actually just a, a few yeah. weeks ago. It's one of those movies I can watch pretty much mm -hmm. whenever. Um, just put it on and yeah, go about your day. Yeah, and, and in the background even. Yeah. Like it's just, they did, like the first time I watched this, it, it, I think did to me like Fight Club yeah. style where mm -hmm. I just... Yes, I me too. Like, what is going on? It's just trying to follow and trying to put the pieces together mm -hmm. yourself, and you're you're guessing a little bit at this, and they give you just enough of that, and they give you enough crumbs, but they tie up everything. Yeah. Like, this is not one of those movies like Lost, the television show, where, where they're they just, just keep they like let's just make a hundred yeah. things and see what forty of them oh. turn out. You know, no, no they fog monster. They they just tie up everything so well that everything is answered by the end and in I a don't reasonable want to spoil way. This movie because. Yeah. Somebody may not have seen it. Yeah, this is. I won't spoil it. Just yeah, say it wraps up it. at the end in a in a way that I'm. It's believable enough throughout mm -hmm. that I really get captured in that suspense yeah. of the whole time. Like, what is going on? <laughs> and it's it's Sean Penn and Michael Douglas, yeah, and I watched both it. of them fantastic. I watched it at a time where I I was more like into like comedies and romances and all this kind of stuff, and then I watched the game with my dad, and it was just like. We were both just like, what, what just happened? Like that was. We still talk Life about it. Life yeah. changed. Yeah, we still talk about yeah. it to this day. I don't even remember the first time I watched it. Like definitively, this is me on the couch watching mm -hmm. it. But I remember the effect it had yes. on me. Yeah. The first time I watched it, because I was just blown away. Blown away again, like Fight Club style. Mm -hmm. Nothing had ever been done like that mm -hmm. before. Um, it's it's kind of it's weird because there's a lot of those types of movies throughout recent pa recent ish past say 20 30 years that I don't know that you can really pull off anymore today because yeah. so many things have done it like you can never have another fight club mm -mm. that's just it's derivative at this point yeah. but that was the first one that I'd ever seen and Me I too. think kind of if if not the first one that did it the first one that made it popular right um, it's kind of that like it, it, I guess we're we're all gamers here it's like drafting card drafting I mean, maybe Seven Wonders wasn't the first one to do it, but, but it definitely yeah. put it on the map. Right. It's that type of a thing for me that I don't think they can ever do another The Game. Right. I don't think so either. And if they redo it, everybody will just know what happens. Yeah, you can't you redo that. that one. Yeah. You, you just have to come up with different stories and try something else. Yeah, Because exactly. you can't do you The can't Game do twice. If you try, it's, it's not going to be yeah. It's not gonna be successful. successful. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's my suspense. That one. was a good suspenseful one. I think it's I, I no matter what you say, it's gonna be wrong because that is the quintessential. I don't. No, it's not the quintessential. It is the ultimate. The the ultimate, not the penultimate. The Mine's ultimate. gonna be the penultimate. Mine is not gonna be maybe a popular choice for this, okay. but the way it made me feel at the time, my, yeah, I had to choose it. Okay. And it's Argo. That's a good choice. Okay. I, I oh, I'm. So so happy that you picked oh, that good. because I couldn't. I you were give me this shit. is a little bit of a spoiler. I couldn't find anywhere to put Argo, and it is fantastic. Yeah. It is a fantastic movie that I had nowhere to actually place yeah. it. And you're right, this is it is a good suspenseful movie. Yes, and it's I, not the game, but it no, is. But, but it, it is it is probably more terrifying yes. suspense than the game. So the game is it is a little terrifying just because your world is turned upside mm -hmm. down and you don't know what's happening, but. Getting stuck mm -hmm. in a mob in the Middle East, I can't imagine anything more terrifying. Mm -mm. And no, so that, neither. the suspense of that. So that... Let me <laughs> keep interrupting you so you can't describe... Yes. That's a good choice. I'm very if this approval. If this ever happened to me, I would just be a puddle that somebody would have to put in a bag and carry around. I'd them. be in a body bag because I'd have yeah. shot myself. Yeah. So these people get stuck in... Is it Iran? I think it's Iran, yeah. Iran. Iran. Um, yes, in the absolutely eight, Iran. In the 70s or 80s. The early, late, late 70s. I don't know the exact history here, and that's, I'm sorry. Um, but they get stuck in Iran, and Iran's pissed off at America. It's in the 70s, I think. So these people work in the, the embassy, the American embassy in Iran, and that place gets mobbed. It gets overrun. So, like, the diplomat yeah. gets murdered yeah. publicly, and, and so there's a select group of them that were able to escape. Into the Canadian embassy. No, into the Canadian embassy diplomat's home. Home, okay, right. So they, yes. they were able to kind of sneak out seven, six, seven of them. Yeah, something like that. Um, and they're, they're just hiding out in the home of the, the uh, Canadian diplomat. And the Iran government's like, do you got them? Do you have them? Yeah, there's pressure, right? Do you have them? And so he's 
his life is being put in danger, but he's helped, he's trying to shelter these people. And then the Americans are trying to figure out how to get them out. And they decide to go in and pretend like they're a movie crew from Canada scoping different areas to film this movie called Argo. And it's a, a sci-fi movie. Yeah. And the premise is really cheesy, but... It's basically like a B, B version right. of Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, like, they wanted to do the Middle Eastern... Twi like, so it's obviously fake, right? Like, But they the thing is, they they faked the pre-production mm -hmm. of an entire, entire Hollywood movie. film. Yes. And they got actual Hollywood producers and stuff involved. Yeah. They, they had parties for it. Yeah. And, like, they were starting to get the buzz around. Mm -hmm. And, like, the script... They had, they had a reading of the script. And these people had to learn how to be this whole different thing. They had to be these Hollywood entertainment people and know kind of the lingo and stuff and it's just nuts and yeah. then i remember so specifically i mean they get out i mean that's just yeah. what happened it wasn't a suspense in real life but anyway i remember they go through the the uh the airport airport they get on the airplane all these people are chasing them the plane lifts off and they say that they're out of iran, iran airspace, airspace and, and everybody and i just started crying because I didn't realize how tense I was. I mean, I, it was just like, I was sitting there and then I just went, <laughs> and it was just so suspenseful. I'm on body, I'm, so, I'm surprised I wasn't sore the next day. I was just so tense. And then as soon as they got, I mean, I just let go. Yeah. I'm surprised kind of that I didn't pee on myself because everything was so clenched up. This was a great movie though. Yeah, really, and I, again, I couldn't, I could not find it any, anywhere else to put this, and I, it's absolutely fantastic film. Good, I'm glad you like my choice. Yes, very, very good choice. I thought you were gonna give me shit about it. No, no, <laughs> fantastic one. All right, the next okay. one, drug, drug-related oh. movies. So this, this is, um, again, I think it generally le lends itself to the darker side. And I mean, there's gonna be like, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Love that film. Um, but it doesn't strike me as this type. Like, for me, I went darker. Mm -hmm. um, that one could very easily have been a choice for me on this topic. I, if you haven't seen that movie, it's fantastic. And the acting, the Daniel Steele really Toro and, and Johnny Depp, that to me is the, some of the best acting I've ever seen. Um, it is a trip. It is... It's weird. It's a, stra it's a cerebral watch. Yeah. I should probably have put this as my number one <laughs> cerebral. Anyway, um, but this is... What I'm looking for is not that. It's more like train spotting and my choice is a requiem for a dream very difficult oh, watch yeah. but it is very real um and it let's just i'm gonna say this you guys it hits home and i don't even have a home for it to hit in <laughs> like my family didn't i i have some extended family yeah. that had some drug issues but nothing like this level of drug issue and nobody in my immediate family but it felt so real it really and did. it felt so connected to my life that it was frightening Again, for no reason. Yeah. This poor woman who, who gets put into a position where she's taken advantage of by... It's a, it's, a, it's a form of confidence scheme, yeah. but it's essentially a promise of being on television as maybe a studio, studio audience member. And then just looking at it, it's like the type of thing that if you were going to Universal Studios, you could sign up for and just be... A, but she gets it in her mind that she's going to be on television. She's going to be in, uh, interviewed by the... The, the person, you know, the, the mm -hmm. host of the show and, and everyone's going to love her. And then she, she wants to fit into her beautiful red dress that she has, but she's gained a little weight. And so she's trying to lose some weight and the doctors start prescribing things to her. And it really puts a needle on these, these doctors. And I don't think that most doctors this way, I think it's very rare, but it can happen. These doctors who just don't care enough, they're just in it they for, just write the script and yeah, they're just, they, they get the kickback from the drug company the more that they can prescribe that to a particular drug and this, this poor woman gets put into a position where she basically goes psychotic because of the drugs they put her on. At the same time, and the majority of the, the, the scope of the movie is her son and her and his friend and group of friends falling into heroin addiction. And because of her distance here, there's no hope for him. And you can see that life just spiral out of control for the entire, entirety of the movie. And these are horrific things to happen to you in, like, in your life. The things that these women, these women, these people, the women too, the, the, the things that all of them go through are just horrible. This movie, I just don't even want to talk about it anymore. It is, it is super depressing. It is, if, if you want to walk away realizing that humanity has no hope and feeling absolutely sure about that, watch Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. But it, I mean, the acting, 
is fantastic. fantastic. The story, the cinematography, the, the direction, like, as a film, it is brilliant. But it's really And sad. it is super dark and it's super depressing. Just, just, I don't have anything else to say. I'm done. Yeah. You can go ahead. I don't remember what mine is now. <laughs> okay. Mine's traffic. That's a good choice. And mainly because I like the storyline. It's a bunch of storylines together. Yeah, it's one of those um, multiple yeah. convergent storyline situations. I think it's, there's two storylines that stood out the most, and that's Michael Douglas is like the conservative judge and his daughter's on superheroine. Yeah, so he, he's, he's like appointed by the president to be... The fight against drugs, yeah. yeah. And then his daughter's on heroin, it's like that... Yeah, he he realizes the happens. war on the war on drugs is a war on your own family. Yeah. Like this, we, it's sorry, I don't mean to cut you no, off. It's okay. the, but the general, the general scope of what that movie is trying to portray is that the, the, drug situation in our world in this country specifically is so complex and so interwoven into our society that, that you cannot just declare war on right, drugs. Yeah. There's it's too complex for that. We there's there's too much nuance that we need to approach this in a different way. Yeah, it's really what they're trying to get to. Too many threads going into too many different places to pick them out. And then Catherine Zeta Jones. He's a bad like so someone who's her husband innocent as all hell yeah. and put into a scenario where she has to she does. Yeah. She Her takes control. Her husband is a drug kingpin, and he gets put in jail, and she's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. She's pregnant. She's got a kid. She's got this lifestyle that she's used to, and she's like, I have no other choice but just to take on his role. Yeah. And she just... Nails it. Does it. Yeah. Yeah. She goes to all the other kingpins that she, you know, that have been in the distribution pipeline along with her husband, and she just tells them how it is. Yeah. I'm taking over. This is it. And... She nailed it. Yeah. yeah, I really liked her character in that one. So that was the thing that stood out to me. So that's mine. I like Benicio del Toro's role, where he's like a, a police officer who's legit. Like he's not mm -hmm. on the crooked, and how difficult of a role he plays yeah. in this. And uh, that was a good movie. Yeah, it yeah. Was. good, good call. Oh, thank you. Much less depressing. At, yeah, and feeling, just as real. Just feeling as a real. little better about myself right now. Yeah. Requiem for a Dream's a heavy movie. Yeah. Even to think about. Okay, so that's it. That's it. Yeah. We made it. We made it through the dark times. Yeah. Uh, nothing but sunshines from here on out. Yeah, we'll see. What do you guys think? Any uh, any in these categories that you'd recommend? Um, these are actually a category of movie that I really like to see good movies made yeah. in, and don't often find them. They're they're Angels. not as they're, yeah they're not as often pursued because I I mean think, I don't think the the budget is going to be there because these are not going to be your Hollywood blockbusters, so they are usually a little bit off the beaten path. Excuse me, a little bit off the beaten path, but when you can get a good one, man, it's like uh, timeless. Like I say, yeah. time like the exercise. Is there timeless? Yeah, the game. So it's always gonna be good. Okay, so thanks for watching. Let us know what you think, and see you next time.